en las reuniones donde voy digo, ¿qué ven en mí? Y todo el mundo dice, pues, un panchito, un inmigrante. Pero no, y yo cojo que lo suelo andar a traer aquí. Y digo, es que yo, yo soy español. Pero es que la realidad del, de, 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 del fenotipo ha cambiado. Y Europa ha cambiado, pero, pero en, en Francia el Mohamed sigue siendo marroquí. O en, o, en, o, en, o en Londres o en Bélgica y eso es lo que le está haciendo daño y después nos preguntamos por qué hay yihadistas porque no se ha trabajado el proceso de integración y esa realidad nadie la quiere decir ni la quiere reconocer según el alto comisionado de Naciones Unidas hay 65 millones de personas desplazadas a la fuerza de las cuales más de la mitad son menores y esa es la verdadera tragedia de una situación como esta, desesperada, de una generación que se les está negando el derecho a la educación y a la protección internacional. Lo pasan mal todos los refugiados, pero especialmente los niños, y lo único que puede salvarles y ayudarles a salir de este calvario que están viviendo es la, la educación, integrarse en un sistema educativo para normalizar sus vidas. La normativa legal reconoce a cualquier alumno extranjero exactamente los mismos derechos en el plano educativo y la misma obligatoriedad de la educación. Casi todas las comunidades, hasta donde a mí me llega el conocimiento, tienen algo que se conoce como aulas de enlace, aulas en las cuales primero aprenden la lengua, pero no como alumnos segregados de su grupo. Es como una especie de medida de refuerzo para que vayan adquiriendo el idioma en la medida en que se van integrando en el curso académico que les corresponde por edad o por formación. Que nuestras medidas no son específicas con refugiados e inmigrantes, sino son medidas más generalistas, pero que afectan a los colectivos más vulnerables, como la población gitana, como el colectivo LGTB, es decir, que, y en este caso también inmigrantes, refugiados. Vamos a ver el centro, ¿vale? Pues estamos trabajando en torno a... Esto es un cajón desastre que nos meten pues, todo tipo de alumnado con trastornos de conducta, alumnos que están recibiendo apoyo en salud mental, todos tienen desventaja sociofamiliar ¿vale? y aquí es donde se suele meter el alumno inmigrante. Yo siempre digo que esto es como un pequeño oasis. Cuando salen de aquí, pues encuentran, pero ahí ya nosotros no podemos hacer nada. Pero mientras están aquí, la verdad es que sí, que la experiencia es positiva, de pronto sacan buenas notas, de pronto ven que entienden las cosas, que son capaces de hacer cosas, que se les trata con respeto porque, bueno, pues el profesorado también tiene un perfil y responde de otra manera. Se solucionan los problemas de otra manera, Aquí no es lo mismo la disciplina que puede ser en un instituto. Entonces, yo creo que sí que son necesarias las aulas de compensación educativa y que cumplen un objetivo y que sacamos, sacamos resultados. Y aunque solamente sea eh, el año que pasan aquí, eso ya que se llevan, ese, eso ya se llevan para adelante. Porque después les esperan pues, situaciones, la mayoría muy, muy duras, muy duras, que viven con un nivel económico muy bajo, con padres en el paro, familias desestructuradas, violencia familiar, entonces, violencia de género, entonces es verdad que es duro, entonces el rato que están aquí por lo menos, eso que se lleva. For the young people who arrive to Europe, who seek shelter from war, from natural disasters, from destruction, the schools are often the first entry point. Schools need to be safe places to learn. And if we don't want to lose a whole generation, we need to stand up to our responsibility and embrace these young people. Education is key to integration, to inclusion, and it is the means to lift people out of poverty. Jel ima nekoga za baraku 16 da otključa Karitasov? We have around 120, 120 kids currently. They are unaccompanied minors.
the situation in Serbia. Uh, you can stay here for two years waiting regularly to cross the border. Within this period, some of the families and, uh, and the guys, they just decided, okay, I'm used to live here. I'm used to these people. Can I apply for asylum? All the teacher or all the manager of a school talking is Serbian and uh, some a little known about English. When I was in Iran and uh, Farzane from Afghanistan but live in Iran, uh, I think you know at the first time when my children goes to a school uh, for one month learning many things. Then my children go to a school, the teacher uh, told to um, immigrate children uh, at the end of the class, sitting there and just learning a uh, language. Just this important, mm -hmm. not another thing. So it's maybe their way of educating mm -hmm. that is uh, slow progress. Mm -hmm. When the teacher learning to yeah. the older student, mm -hmm. the similar, not difference between yeah. the refugee okay. and Serbian. This is this is not yeah. different. Not so all difference. of them similar. Yeah. Yes, because all of them are students yeah. and and come to a school yeah. for learning. Yeah. So there is a negative difference for yes. Afghan refugees. Yeah. And, for and refugees, not way? not yeah. not yeah. yeah. Afghan or Iran. Refugee. Yeah. Yes, refugees. Yeah. Yeah. يعني آه تمام يعني هو الطفل ما بيقدر انه مباشرة يجي يندمج اول شيء بده يتعلم اللغة وراها يلا يقدر انه يندمج بالمجتمع ما ممكن انه شخص يحكي عربي او يحكي انجليزي بيجي يتدخل مثل او هلا مثل الفرح ما بتفهم مية بالمية صربي يعني بيحكون معه انجليزي والباقين يحكون معهم صربي انه بس انه بقدر المستطاع انه ي... بيدخلوهم مدارس ويدخلوهم استقبال الأولاد ويدخلوهم يعني روضات أو مدارس ويعلموهم مش يخلوهم شبه يعني مشردين إنه لا مدارس لا اهتمام ولا أي رونيك هو مطيرات سامة دوتشة إلي دو شكولو باش مالا باش يتاشك مطيرات سامة دوتشة إنك بدوان دوتشة وشكولو دوتشة توجه توجه سربسكي يزيك i da uči nešto na srpskom jeziku. Radi sa devojčicama i vrlo im je bilo bitno, mislim, sad pričamo o srpskom jeziku, njim je bilo bitno, devojci iz kampa, deca su migranti, bilo im je bitno da znaju kako da kažu da je se neko sviđa ili se ne sviđa, ili da kaže nekom dječatku gubi se. To je juče bila, baš mi je komentar, da kaže nekom dječatku gubi se. Pa je onda ona njima objašnjavala, dobro, da li bi se sa vama svidelo, da nam neko kaže gubi se. Mislim, postoji drugi način, pa to već prelazim priču o tom da sam učinju srpskog jezika. Već se malo se dotakneš i neke teme koje je neko vaspitanje na vaspitanje. Tako da, sve se tu dešava individualno. How can you learn if there is little Serbian, little English? How do you learn? Who English? Okay, when they know English, should they tell us in English? Mm -hmm. He didn't use the word teach. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they use Serbian, and when we understand that, then we we'll understand that. How many languages do you speak? Me, English. And Serbian, Kurdish, no Kurdish, and Afari, Farsi, and that's it. So Farsi is your first language, Farsi? No, it's my language is Kurdish. It's Kurdish, okay. Yes. So you speak Kurdish and Farsi. Yes. So you speak four languages. Yeah. And you are twelve years old. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any? Any teacher in the camp that uh, teach you about your language, your first language, like uh, Kurdish, that someone give you classes in Kurdish in camp? Yes. Do you have that? Yeah, we have. We have a class for Serbian. Only for Serbian, but not yes. Kur Kurdish? Kurdish. No. It's my language. But somebody is going to teach you not to learn Turkish, but to develop it, to read? No. No, you don't need it? No. <laughs> 
Oh, you need it, man. <laughs> Wait, why do you think you don't need to read? Me. In Kurdish. In Kurdish, I don't, I don't have nothing. Some book, something. Mm. Would you like to have? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Nisam ga nikad učila, učila sam nemački i ruski. Kada se nađete u situaciji da morate da se sporazumete sa nekim ko ne govori isti jezik kao i vi, onda se sporazumete, a da ne sami ne znate kako. Onda iz vas izađe taj neki engleski koji negde znate. Neverbalna komunikacija odigra ključnu ulogu, tako da to vam je kombinacija srpskog, engleskog, nemačkog, nemuštog, neverbalnog, znači svih mogućih jezika koji postoje. I to dozvolja ovoj djeci da ponovo budu djece u pravom smislu riječi. Kao što ste rekli, to je možda i najbolji da preduprijedi da ne bude trauma i to, ja? Da ovaj, preventivno. Mjera protiv traume, da? Da je taj normalni neki dan. نام هناس پانزه سال استم از افغانستان آمدیم و می خواهیم شاید اینجا باشیم یا شاید بریم یک مملکت دیگه بشتر اسم من سهل یازده سهل من است من می خواهیم فوتبال شم می خواهیم جرمنی برم خوش دارم و خطر خوب درس می درچیم خوب می درم I am Mehdi, I am from Iran, I am 40 years old and I love this country. I am not a country, but I am a person who is a person. 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 فکر میکردم مثلا اینجا ما مثلا بیایم اینجا از ما خوش نمیاد یا مثلا مخاطر این که ما مختلف هستیم. دلیل می‌تونه باشه که هر چقدر که می‌خوایم با یک کودک که چیزی می‌خواد که 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 می‌ Trappen inderdaad in de valkuil, want daar is soms veel te fel in mee te gaan en daar een veel te grote rol in op te nemen. Um, maar daar zou inderdaad een beginnende. Keiharde wereld terecht, waar, ja, waar ze heel ja, zelfstandig moeten zijn, waar ze uh, vaak dingen, uh, ja, tekstel tegen hun neus gaan krijgen. En ik vind ook dat dat onze taak is, dat we dat ook uh, aan hen moeten meegeven. Daar moeten we ze zo niet behandelen, maar wel ze uh, bewust maken van, kijk, hè, uh, de, de, volgend jaar in de reguliere school ben je een van de studenten, net als alle anderen. Later in de maatschappij, als je gaat werken, gaat de baas niet voor jou speciaal dingen doen, omdat jij in die of die situatie zit, maar gaat hij jou behandelen net als een andere. Met te veel begin. Er moet zeker heel veel ondersteuning zijn voor hun situatie, maar tegelijkertijd is het wel onze job om in op de realiteit voor te bereiden. En dat is een heel moeilijke afweging. Belgium has a on secondary level a fully segregated, separated system for newcomer education. We teach in uh, Dutch, that's the teaching language, that's uh, also the law we have to teach in Dutch. There is no mother tongue use here. It would be an advantage for them to, uh, to be integrated directly in a regular school because of course you learn better if you are with people speaking the language all the time. Um, we also notice that students that left to another school in a couple of months, they, they, their level of Dutch increases more rapidly than it did here. So these are the, the smallest ones, two and a half, three years old. We are the second biggest city in the world with, if we talk about nationalities. We are the biggest school with nationalities in Antwerp. 
child arrives here, he's Syrian. He speaks his local Syrian accent. He speaks a kind of Arabic. He will have to learn Dutch really fast. And at the same time, he will have to learn the basics of French. So these children are in a, a language bubble. And some, some of them, the half of them really manage that. They can do that in one year time. And it's important that they uh, develop their own skills in a, in a, in a uh, self-regulated way. They know what to do. They, there's one's explained what to do and, and they're used to it. So you can see all the colors of the world here. Yeah. You are where you come from. That's a part of yourself. And you can keep that, you can talk about it, you can talk in your own language when it is appropriate, not always, but when it is appropriate. They feel warm and they learn better. The stronger the home language is, the better the learning of new language goes. So I ask my parents, please do not speak Dutch with your children. All the children who are here for the second and the third generation living in Belgium, they have a kind of mangled language because we forced them to go in Dutch, 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 and nothing is right. Not their home language is right, not their Dutch is right. They talk kind of mix-up language where is no, no warmth, no feeling, no color. And that's problematic. And we really ask our parents, please keep on talking your home language. When a school where everybody is white and there arrives one Syrian child, they don't have to do anything. Just put them in the class and let them be there for two weeks. And after two weeks, that child will start learning. The teachers who don't have the mindset to let that happen are afraid of that. And they will say, you can't put him in my class because I don't know what to do with him. Welcome in the first grade. They learn the blue letter today, the U. Every morning we make a circle and then uh, the children can say hello or good morning in their own language and they learn each other the, to say good morning in their own language. In het Turks zeggen we Merhaba. En dan zeggen jullie? Merhaba. In het Japans, in oh. Japanese, zeggen we? Konnichiwa. 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 In het Bijbers zeggen we? Salam alaikum. In het Welke taal hebben we nog? In welke taal? The second year is there. So to the second, you see children making mathematics, others are doing uh, word games, another one is working on the computer, and things like that. Do maar gewoon verder. Moet je mee hebben? Some children will learn more from sitting and listening to a teacher than do it themselves, of course. Other children won't, so if you switch that, I don't make choices, they make the choices. I put the framework, these are the borders. And in between these borders, you can do what you want. Plan something, do it and check it, act, change it again, do it again. If you get people thinking like that, they will see results. And that is important. It's important that people see result of what they're doing. I believe that we have to give our teachers a toolbox full of ways to teach things. And how bigger the toolbox is, the more effect we will have. And I believe that the more variation we give, the more results there are, the more children will get something. If the teacher believes that the child can go forward, the child believes that it can go forward, and the parents believe that it go forward, it goes forward. So make sure everybody believes the day we stop believing that the child can go forward, it stops going forward. What we have learned from this project is that when thinking about educational policy, we have to be humble. Because ultimately, we are speaking about our children and they are our responsibility. Welke talen spreken jullie allemaal? 
Frans en Arabisch. Frans. Nederlands en Turks. Frans. It is a principle based on the fact that all languages and culture have the same, the same value, the same status. Weten jullie wat een kamishibai is? Een kamishibai dat was een oude Japans the vertaaltheater. En hier hebben wij 98 verhalen in 21 talen. Welke taal gaan we kiezen? Oké. Voilà, Turks. Waar is Turks? Oké, okay. druk op Turks. Okay. We have sometimes parents, they say, yeah, but I speak a dialect from Africa. It's not important. Yes, it is important. It is important that you talk, you use your mother language with your children, because it's also a question of identity. And so you can build an identity if you speak the mother language of your parents, of your grandparents. Otherwise, if there is no communication between parents and children, the, if there is no, not the same language, it is very difficult to communicate and to build an identity. It's very important for the children to realize that a, an identity can be a multiple identity made of different layers. It is not a problem to be half, half Moroccan, half Belgian, half uh, Dutch. It, it is not a problem, but they, they have to know the different pieces of their identity in order to make a, a multiple identity, a positive identity. Oké, okay, kom, er is maar één verhaal in het Marokkaans, want dat is geen geschiedenis.